uh, everything. May the Lord pour his blessings upon us as we look into his word. Today is uh, 25th of June and we'll be having, uh, I think it's a Thursday, we'll be having our Bible discussion. So we pray for, for more blessings from heaven that, that no one will remain the same. That the Lord will speak to you, will speak to you. Uh, his servant and the many many other people as well. T -t -t Tonight we'll be looking at factors that shape your character for good or for bad. Factors or things that shape your character uh, to be good or to be bad. So that will be our discussion topic and I'm sure the Lord is going to bless us. Let's ask him to bless the word. In the name of Jesus, Father we pray. We ask that you bless us tonight in your word. Speak through your servant Lord. And touch heart and 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 help people to be transformed uh, into the image of Christ, your Son. Uh, we also pray that you teach us more things and deliver us from uh, evil and evil spirit and evil people. Help us to understand your word and give us the faith to put into practice. I pray for my brothers and sisters, the dozens, hundreds, and thousands who who will be listening to this sermon. That oh Lord, you will bless them and let this sermon be a turning point. In someone's life that someone's life will be turned around and from today someone will begin to build his or her character to live a victorious life and ultimately to make it to heaven I offer myself as a vessel speak through me and bless your people in Jesus name Amen I mean so may the Lord bless all of you for tuning in and as usual if you are online you can share the link with your friends and uh, your colleagues and your family members so that they can also join in and be blessed. Our focus is on uh, uh, factors that shape our character for good or for bad. And I'm sure we are all going to be blessed so much tonight. And someone is going to be promoted because his or her character is going to be well built. And someone will make it to heaven. Someone's husband is going to change tonight. Someone's wife is going to change tonight. And I'm sure your employers will be happy to see you uh, in a new uh, way from tonight in the name of Jesus. If you have any question, you can ask me. Just uh, post it. We will try to answer as best as we can. So, so yes. Yeah. So I'll start by saying that many people uh, do well in life because they pay the attention to building their character. Others neglect to build their character, and so they harm themselves unnecessarily. They're, most of the time, they disqualify themselves for good things, and if they don't change in time, then they will also uh, disqualify themselves uh, from uh, eternal life because God will, will only allow uh, those who have the character of Christ access to his eternal kingdom. Now, so because of this reason and other things we'll be discussing tonight, as part of what we do in life, God expects us to build our character to become like Jesus. So Jesus is the one we look up to, right? Cry because he came to this world and lived and served the Father and went back to heaven. So he went through all that we are going through yet. He remained faithful and we can learn a lot from his character traits. And so it is the will of God that human beings should look to Christ to build uh, their character. And to talk about character, what we are doing is that we are attempting to restore our original self. Our original self, we know from the beginning of creation, God created human beings in his own image, right? So we were like God image-wise until the fall, until Adam and Eve sin and distorted our true character and since that time God expects every man every woman to work and on their own character to restore that and so Christ came to live uh, a true life the divine the holy one and his life is example that we must follow so to talk about character building a good character it's an attempt to restore uh, one's original self, the imago Dei, the image of God that was lost because of the fall. And I also want to say that no one was born with a good character, but a good character is acquired through conscious and determined effort 
the book of Proverbs, for example, will tell you to acquire wisdom, do everything to acquire wisdom. Uh, St. Paul was, 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 would tell you to crucify the sinful nature so that your true self uh, will manifest. And so no one uh, is born, uh, how they call it, a good person, but that God expects us to, with determined effort, that conscious effort, to build that good character so that we can uh, live a victorious life. So what is character? The dictionary defines character as the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. The mental, moral qualities are distinctive to an individual. So your character, if you like, is who you are. So what we are discussing tonight is to touch on something that is very dear to our, uh, our core being. So your character is who you are. Uh, because it is that mental, what is in your mind, in your heart, and it is your moral principles, how you attend to good and bad, uh, that defines who you are. And so that is what the dictionary uh, defines character. is. So character is who you are, what you say, what you do, how you react or respond to situations. And Jesus says that by their fruit you shall know them. You shall know them by how they live. So how you live your life in thought, in action, and in desires, and living all these three, three influence your dressing and outward, uh, uh, outlook in life. Uh, they all define who you are. And as I said, many people have not taken their time. For many people don't even think about character development. When they think about character development these days, the focus is on skills. How to acquire skills to do a particular job or tax or project, but not the persona. The, I mean, the persona somehow has been uh, neglected. And so we've mentioned the need for people to do that. Uh, and we'll look at the six factors that shape our character. And as introduction, I want to mention a few things and we'll read a few uh, passages from the Holy Scriptures. And then we will look at the six main factors of things that shape your character for good or bad, uh, depending on which way you want to go. And uh, it's also true that unfortunately in our days, there has been a shift from how to become a good person to how to be good looking. So there is that shift from how to become a good person. And the focus now is on how to look good, how to have good muscles, how to have a toned skin, nice skin, nice haircut, a flat belly, a certain size and a certain weight. So how we look, uh, we've neglected uh, how, uh, how, how to become a good person. We've neglected that and, and, and somehow people are not uh, satisfied they've lost their identity who they are in fact they are not so happy with themselves and hence you see people try to re-image themselves into uh, various you know uh, uh, how they call it uh, looks and so let's also remind ourselves to focus on becoming a good person not just be, uh, uh, looking good but becoming a good person body spirit uh, and soul when we look good but are not good, we then become hypocrites. In other words, we max ourselves. We max ourselves right, to become hypocrites. We are not the true self that we present to the public. And Jesus Christ had problem with the Pharisees because of this attitude. They look outwardly good, but inside they were hypocrites. So let's, uh, as, as introduction, read Matthew 23, 22. 5 to 26. Christ had that problem with the Pharisees. We are reading the book of Matthew 23, 25 to 26. And even God himself said in first Samuel that he's more concerned about the inner beauty than the outward beauty. And St. Peter in first Peter 3 also mentioned the same thing. So let's read Matthew 23, 25 to 26. Now, Jesus speaking here, he says, What you teach us of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrite. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self indulgence. Blind Pharisees first clean the inside of the cup and, and dish, and then outside also will be clean. 
So he was addressing them that they focus so much on their looks and how they dress and how they talk and how they use the right terminology and how they make sure they cross all their T's and dot their all I's, make sure their grammar was right and make sure everything is spotless. But inside they were full of greed. They were full of self-indulgence. So Christ said, please take care of the character, yeah, the persona. And then the outward will also be, be good. Christ had very tough time with these Pharisees because they neglected what uh, mattered most. And that was the uh, 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 becoming and not just the looks, but becoming. And, and our, our father also said the same, First Samuel 6, 7. Then we can read that text, First Samuel 16, 6 and 7. When the Lord sent uh, the prophet Samuel to go and anoint uh, somebody from the family of Jesse as a king. When the prophet got there and, and saw the fair son and, and saw how well built he looked, he said, wow, this is the Lord's anointed. Sometimes a man of God, we can be, uh, how do you call it, moved by sight. That God is moved by what is in the heart. Uh, 1 Samuel 16, 6 says, When they arrived, the prophet Samuel saw a layup and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to the prophet Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people looked at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So, so, so that is God's. Uh, I, 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 I take on this that he, he looks at what is in the heart not just the outward uh, uh, appearance just like that so good character my brother my sister uh, is more beneficial than good looks okay we all know that sometimes singles you can see a woman on, on, on Facebook Instagram or any platform their pictures they look oh, wow amazing but the moment you meet the person and have conversation, mm, you begin to go back. You begin to go back. Or some will not even know their true character until they, they marry and they settle. Then the true character now begins to show up. And so then it becomes a fight. The reason is simple. The person neglected to build uh, 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 his or her character. But, but rather they focus more on the looks. Uh, so God is more interested uh, in becoming the persona, body, spirit, and soul uh, than just. So uh, as we mentioned, Christ is the one we look up to. And let's read the book of Romans 8, uh, 29. Romans 8, 29. Now we see this call there that we are to be conformed to Christ. Romans 8, 29. We have to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. So I read the book of uh, Romans 8, 29 says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So God wants everyone to be conformed. Conformed means that you must be transformed to conform to the image of Christ. So that deliberate change. That that is uh is, is demanding and Christ tells us in Matthew eleven twenty eight to thirty and was calling all those who are weary and tired and he was telling them that come to me and you have rest and learn from me. Of course, that some people are tired because of their sins. Others are tired because of their bad character traits, and so they struggle in life. And and here, let me read a text. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Christ is speaking here. Come to me all, come to me all you who are weary and burdened. And people have made different things that burden them. And he said, and I will give you rest. Some poverty, some uh, sickness, some they are saints, some they are bad character trait, some evil spirit. Now Christ says, come and I'll give you rest. 29, take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Okay, so you have been going in a certain way, character-wise, character and 
Uh, if it has not helped you, you change, you change. Like J Jacob before he met the angel of the Lord, he has such a very interesting character. Just stealing people's destiny, being plain, smart, smart. He suffered a lot until he now learned how to seek forgiveness and he repented. And so then he started living a normal life. As we speak, maybe Christ is calling as some of you to drop uh, all that uh, has not been helping you. And to come to him and take on and learn from him. Jesus is our everything. Uh, the book of 1 Peter uh, 2 uh, verse 15 to 18 will also give the same invitation. That we should look to Christ and learn from his example of humility. And so uh, there are a lot of benefits of a good character. For example, you will find favor before God and people. You will find favor before God and people. You will do well in life. If you have good character, you can overcome every challenge because you have the wisdom, you have the patience, you have the understanding to overcome every challenge. You know how to deal with these things and not to respond just to think just like that. What you do, well, you'll be able to overcome life challenges. If you're a man, your husband, your wife will be so pleased with you. If you're a woman, your husband will be very happy. Your children will call you blessed. And your employer will be so pleased with you, you know, because of the good character. That is, I mean, the skill you can, you can study, go to uni or college or even just form and, and get some skills for life. But character is something that I don't think most uh, institutions focus on character development or even at your workplace. They just want you to deliver the results. But there is no avenue for you to develop your character. And God expects the church to help. So the coming of the kingdom... Uh, we mentioned on Tuesday, uh, one of the objectives is to show us the, the, the right character, how we, we are supposed uh, to be as a people. You will find favor in the sight of God. And if you have that, that confidence in, 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 in the Lord and, and that your approach to life will be different. Okay, All right. In fact, inwardly, you'll be very happy because you, you don't live double, you know, lifestyle as well. And, and the peace of God. Uh, will be discovered through that. On the other hand, good character can make people jealous of you. So keep that in mind. As you build a good character, people can be jealous of you. And you can even be hated by bad people. That's if you have good character. So if you have good character, it's not all the time the case that people will be clapping for you. No, people may hate, may become jealous of you because of your good character. So let's also mention this so that uh, you don't throw away your good character because you are being uh, treated unfairly and just take on, you know, those bad attitudes. No, just be good. And that is the deal. For those who hate you later will change and, and then they will also become uh, like Christ Jesus. Uh, let me mention a few of the bad character traits. Anger, we know anger is not a good thing. Pride, no, no one, you know, likes a proud person. Okay, so try not to be. People are not interested in your pride and looking down on people is not good. It means that you look down upon yourself. And theft, stealing is not good. Sexual immorality, ungratefulness, lies, murder, gossip, and we know the many bad character traits. But as a way of introduction, let's mention a few. Then we will change here. Some, uh, let's also mention some of the good character traits. Kindness, respect, faithfulness, gentleness, patience, and and righteousness, you know, self-control, those are the good character traits. And as we'll be looking at later on and having the right spirit in your life or influencing uh, your life, it's also good. So let's now change gear now. Factors of things that shape your character, for good or for bad. We'll be discussing, uh, I think, five of them, six of them tonight. And so pay attention and uh, if you have any question, please, you can get a uh, hardy call it and uh, message me and we will try to answer the question as best as we can. Okay, so the first factor or thing that can shape your character for good or bad is your desires. What you desire in life. Your desires, desires are what is in your heart. Your desires drive you to act. So if you always desire things that are, is, is that, for example, the mouth now speaks what the heart is full of. So the mouth will speak what is here, the desires here, stored. The hand will act accordingly, you know, the mind will process. 
and 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 in the book of James one, the book of James one verse thirteen, uh, this is how uh, James uh, pushed it. How our desire shapes us very important. So always check what is in your heart. And if your heart is not, your desires are not godly, you may plunge yourself into harm. If your desires are godly, you will uh, be leaning towards good things, right? So James 1.13 says that, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, it gives birth to death, for the wages of sin is death. So your first one is your desire. So if you want to, the moment you become conscious of your character, always look at your desires. Is it godly? Is it good? If it's not good, crucify it straight away. Discard it. Don't follow through. Don't, don't process. Don't entertain that desire straight away to go and once as you keep doing that that desire will, will not be uh, featuring in your thinking or, or even in your uh, 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 emotional expressions at all so kill any ungodly desire but St. Paul will use a strong word crucify the flesh or, or the carnal nature uh, of, of the flesh the second uh, thing that can affect your character either for good or bad do you not check if, if there's any Test come in is that your willingness to do what is good and what is bad your willingness to do what is good and what is bad that also shapes you so there are some people they love doing bad stuff so then we call them bad people there are some people to they are always willing to do good so so that shapes their character or who they are uh, St. Paul writing to Timothy uh, said this 2 Timothy 2.20 2nd Timothy 2 20. Let's go there. 2nd Timothy. So you look at uh we are looking at the second one that your willingness to do good or bad. That and I'm willing. And and that one is a bit different. Willing means that you have made a decision. You may not feel like doing it, but I'm willing, I have decided. So some because sometimes what we feel is different from what we really want to do, right? So here, it's not about the emotions or desires displaying, but it's your determination and you, you know, making good use, good use of the knowledge of God to determine what is good and bad. And so we read, I think, when, when we read the Passion and Narrative, Christ asked the Father that if possible, let this cup pass by. And then he said, no man will, but let your will be done. And so Christ, dreading the suffering, wanted an escape and so he submitted his will to the will of the father although he was about to go through pain he said no i will think and he thought and then he decided to go through the right way so so differentiate your feelings from what ought to be done the right thing so there may be times that you don't feel like going to work you, you don't feel like but you know you have to work so so that is why you know this principle is very very important uh, 2 Timothy 2, 20. In a large house, the articles not of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made wholly useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. So your willingness now will lead you to set yourself apart for good things. And that is when God comes and uses you and that becomes your character. So Christ was willing to die for the sins of the world, although it was a difficult one. And as we speak, if you can master that, that skill of grace, to always be willing to set yourself apart, to do good things, that becomes your character. You know, you become the good that you give uh, yourself to do. And, and of course, God and people will use you for good stuff. So I'm sure there are some of you, if you need something good, important, there are, the, are, the, the, are some kind of people you talk to. And if you need to also do rubbish things, you know the people you talk to. Why? Uh, those that you can do rubbish things with, they have set themselves to do that. That's their level. And those who, are, who have set themselves to do good things, that is their level, okay? So that's how life works. So we become, as we willingly decide, to do what is good. So get understanding on moral issues. 
learn what is good and learn what is not. So you take your time, you read the Bible, and you say that this is good, this is not. And so then you apply your apply your free will to good stuff. Yeah, he yeah, had knowledge. Okay, and with time you become. Because the more you do something, you become uh, a product of that very, very thing. Okay, let's look at the third one. I think the third and fourth and fifth are very, very crucial. The third one, as you know, uh, is the people who are close to you. They, they can shape your character for good or bad. Very important. Oh, I'm, I'm sure some of you started smoking because of uh, your friends, your social friends. Some of you started maybe spending too much of friends. Some of you started... Also doing good things in life because of some good person who came close to you. So the people around you, my brother, my sister, they, they, they shape your character. Uh, your friends and associates are a reflection of you. Not all the time. Because sometimes you may be with some people, but, but you are different from them. But in, 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 to, to the outsider, uh, that is the first impression that I mean, the person will have of you. Depending on the people you associate yourself with. Uh, as we know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 13, 20, that walk with the wise and you will become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffer harm. If you walk with people who cannot help you to be wise, you will suffer harm. Uh, and so if you want to be godly, you walk with godly people. If you want to be rich, then you practice, practice the principles of, of, of riches. If not, then uh, all you do is to get paid and spend. And that is one sign of uh, poverty spirit. You get paid and, and you just want to finish the money in your account. That is the spirit of poverty at work. Like the prodigal son. You become poor. It's just a matter of time. And so when you work with the good people, they will, you know, you see their lifestyle. And even if they want to have fun, they will have fun on their, on, on their how they call, profits, not the, the seed. Okay, I have to mention some few things. Some of you, there are some of you, all that you have now, they are seeds and you must plant them. You must invest them, put them into good use. And after five years, they will bear fruit. So when you have assets, then you can spend something, a little bit on, on, on luxury. But if you spend your seed that you are supposed to plant on luxury, my brother must start you on, on the on, on the path uh, of, of, of becoming very, very poor. So 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 let me mention this before we treat uh, this subject in detail. The people around you, uh, they also shape your character. The book of 1 Corinthians 13, 33 says that bad company corrupts good behavior. Bad company corrupts good behavior. So always uh, select the right people uh, to be your friends. In fact, the best thing that some of you will discover is to have God as your friend. You have God as your friend. Abraham walked with God and he became a friend of God. Jesus walked with the disciples and he got to a point and Christ called them and said, hey guys, I no longer call you my servants. I call you my friends because I cannot show you what the Father has told me to do. So, improve your relationship with God so that let God become your friend and what will happen is that the, the friends human beings that you meet you'll be a blessing to them because you have more of God now if you have a friend if you have God as a friend some of you can try you have less problems in life especially social problems because sometimes the more we mingle the more we create problems for ourselves and I'm sure some of you've tasted so those who like friends a lot, they are, if you have about five friends, six friends, you're always in trouble or you're always busy but be doing nothing. Why? Because friend A will call you this weekend, friend B will call you next weekend and you will have time for yourself or your spouse or God or go to church. So you are busy for nothing and all the outing you'll be spending as well from that your small income. So at the end of the month, you don't have any savings, then you have to get things on high purchase. Or maybe on lease because you don't have the money, and at the end of the month you have maybe about thirty thousand credits to 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 pay, and so that can even stress you. So all that you'll be doing for the rest of your life is what to clear the debt, what and to clear the debt is because of friends. So let God be your friend. 
Let God, and wh wherever you go, you give people more of God. Take this, you do so well. You always have the peace of God. If God becomes your friend, not people, human beings, bless them and help them to do well. But the more you spend your time with them, sometimes uh, you get yourself into more trouble, especially if they are not ready to do well in life. You know, they drag you into all kinds of debates and argument and problems in here to the extent that sometimes you don't even have influence over them. Select good friends, my brother, my sister. You do well. And those who are not good, bless them and help them to become good. The, the, the fourth factor that I want us to consider is the spirit living in you or the spirit influencing you. We've mentioned through your desires, your willingness to do what is good, the people around you or the people close to you. And the fourth one is the spirit living in you or the spirit influencing your life. Hmm. Very important, and most people do, don't understand it. If you have a bad spirit in you, that bad spirit will lead you to do bad things and you become a bad person. That is how it works. Sadly, you see, those demons and impure spirit were not supposed to be part of, of, of our world, but because of what Satan did, he brought some of them into our realm, and so they uh, influenced us negatively. And so let me mention this, but the type of spirit that you will attract will depend on your willingness to do what is right and what is wrong. So let's read some scriptures to understand. This is very crucial. If you have the spirit of God in you and influencing your life, you'll be fine. If you don't have the spirit of God in you and if you get close to good people and they don't lead you to God, you'll be the bad one among them. Okay, so let's keep that. So Ephesians 2. 1 to 3. Ephesians 2, yeah, yeah, open the Bible, Nathan. Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. We are talking about character. Build it. And take your time and build it. No one will do it for you. This is not something you say you cannot pray for good character. Character is built. Lord, give me good character. It's not a gift. Yeah, you built it. You built it. You built it. So you allow the Holy Ghost to be in you. You make sure your desires are good. You surround yourself with the good people. Make sure you are willing to do what is good. That is how we build it. And we continue to do that until we die. And then we will, and then Christ will, will perfect us when he comes and give us the resurrected body. So Ephesians 2, 1 to 3 says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. At least you had work. So there's a spirit in the air who are at work and those who are disobeying God. Verse 3. All of us also live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thought. So those bad spirits will inspire your thinking and desires, right? Like the rest we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ when we were dead in our transgressions. And so then they became born again, and then God drove away that evil spirit in them. Now Paul was telling them that when, when you were following the things of the world and you were being disobedient, there was a spirit that was at work in your, your life. And so that is how it works. So those who are go to fetish priests and voodoo and practice sorcery, witchcraft, and all those spirits are not good spirit. So there's nothing... A, a good that you can do. If they, you, your so good intention will end in a very bad way because the spirit are not uh, the Holy Spirit. They are not good spirit at all. So we can talk about Jesus Christ. Acts 10, 13 says that how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and how he went about doing good. Okay, In order for him to do good, he had to be anointed with the good spirit, the, the Holy Ghost. For the Spirit of God to influence our Lord Himself. He Himself said this in the book of Luke 4, 14 to 18, when uh, he, he read from the scroll what people call His manifesto. Let's read Luke 4, 14 to 18. Christ Himself had to be anointed with the Holy Spirit to be influenced, the Holy Spirit, to do good things. So the Spirit in you is very, very important. And you can get the Holy Spirit as you, you give your life to the Lord and be born again. And God forgives you your sins and cleanses you from all the demons and bad things and 
and, and filled you with his Holy Spirit and continue to lead you and guide you by his Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I look for 14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogue and everyone praised him. Why? Because the Spirit of God in him was doing awesome things and people were like, yes, this is our Messiah. Verse 16, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went to the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up and read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him and rolling it, my brothers, he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for, for prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I was talking to someone a few days ago and a person said, a person said how can those who are not redeemed go and win souls? If you are not be set free, you cannot win souls. But you drive people back into the world. And so Christ was anointed with the spirit of the living God. And he told the people gathered his manifesto that this is what I will be doing in this world. And if you read the Gospels, we see Christ healing the sick, preaching uh, the, the Gospel, forgiving people's sin and driving demons. Showing people uh, uh, the way to the Father and restoring you know, peace and, and doing awesome things. And, and, uh, and, and, and Luke... Uh, I, I, I summarize this this way that God anointed Christ Jesus and he went by doing good. Why? So the spirit that is in you is very, very important. Now, if you practice sorcery, witchcraft, magic, and you cannot do good because the spirit in you is just that spirit of Satan that is full of lies, envy, hypocrisy, murder, uh, covetousness. And sexual immorality because the spirit is not the Holy Spirit. That's why you must be born again. At the heart of our discussion is, is the fact that you must be born again so that God will give you a new spirit, a new heart, and a new mindset. And then you become. It's just a very beautiful uh, experience to be born again, to be converted. And, and, then, and then do what God has called you to do. Now, uh, so when Judas wanted to betray Jesus, the Bible says that Satan entered him. Okay, we are looking at how the spirit living in you can influence you. So let's read Luke 22 5. So open with me, Nathan, Luke 22 5. Luke 22 5. How the spirit in you can influence your life. Uh, for me, anytime I, I get close to people, don't be scared. I try to find out the spirit that is influencing the person's life. And, and I think about 99.9% once i begin to ask the lord i get it right at some some uh where last year so, i mean someone came to us and then after having good, good conversation so i looked at the person and i saw three different spirits okay that are, are very very are familiar in the lives of other people from what we are saying and so these three spirits have been in three different people and and then we've encountered them in the church and then the church had defeated those people because of the bad spirit in them now this person also came now she had all the three huh so just imagine it's a trouble double silence okay, this one is triple even if one person was tough to deal with the person because the person never got born again and was harming the church and then another one took came with different one and the third one now, 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 last year, some of you didn't see anything that this person had all the three. But the question that I asked the Lord was that, was this person really sure that she had all this or she, she wasn't aware? It's something that I, I've not got an answer. But anyway, the point is that uh, what, what is influencing your life, uh, the spirit that is influencing your life can have serious impact on your character. So Luke 22, it tells us how Satan now, entered Judas. Now the feast, I'm reading from verse 1, now the feast of the unliving bread called the Passover was approaching and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priest and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when 
no crowd was present. So you see how uh, Pete, uh, uh, Satan was anointed by the devil to do bad stuff. So when you want to do bad stuff, that's what happens. When Satan sees in your heart that you want to do, he comes in and influences your life. I was sharing this with someone this afternoon that even David, Satan, I mean, incited him to, to sin against God and God punished David. Even David, David, so be very careful. That always, pop, always don't, be, don't be too smart. Just try to make sure you're on the right path. That one, no evil spirit can uh, enter, enter your life at all. And now when the disciples wanted to obey God and to preach the gospel, we know in the book of John, Acts 4, the authorities said, don't preach in the name of Jesus again. They warned them. And what they did was that they went and prayed to God. Then the Lord filled them with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that that's the verse 31. The place where they were standing was shaking. And then they started speaking the word of God boldly. Always pray that God filled me with your Holy Spirit. Anytime you encounter any difficult situation, just spend a minute or two, five and praise the Lord, I am weak. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit influence my decision, my action, my responses. Oh Lord, I pray. Before you realize, you will be led by the Spirit of God. And no foul spirit will lead you uh, to do anything that will then characterize uh, who you are. There are a lot of different spirits in the world. I'll mention that people. some people have the spirit of Elijah. So the spirit that was in Elijah... Or the same spirit that came on Elijah, and it was the same spirit that came on John the Baptist. Go and find the scriptures. That is your assignment. The spirit that was on Elijah came on Elisha, and that same spirit was what was in John the Baptist. And Numbers 11 tells us how God took the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the, on the other 70 elders. Okay, so, so one spirit can be in different people's lives at different times. Different. That's why the Holy Spirit can be in all of us at the same time. So, so like the example I was giving this lady, I'm sure the little I know is that she was used to doing bad stuff. So she now had all these three personalities in her. And if God will open your eyes to see, you can just see all the three on her face. And and I was wow, especially if she turns to see you know you know that image of that person there, see that spirit there. Anyway, but what we are focusing on is how the spirit living in you can influence your life, and many people just uh, neglect that. And if you talk to spirits and and you have evil spirit in you, that you can fly and all that, you can never do anything. You destroy your life. And then you also end up in hell. And hence God wants us to be born again and receive his Holy Spirit so that we can all do good things. So now we have those who are drunkards have the same spirit. So those who are drunkards have the same spirit. That is why they, they, I mean, they connect. Okay, so you see all of them grouping, they connect. The same spirit that has come upon all of them and they connect. That's why those who practice witchcraft, they connect. So two or three, normally three, five, seven, they will group witchcraft spirit if you don't have it and you are with them they want to destroy you that is how it works so so the spirit in you uh influences your life then we have those who have a, a delilah spirit it is a spirit that destroys vision we know the story between samson and delilah and how delilah kaput finished samson and and he she died but that says spirit is still in the world and so if you're a visionary and god wants to use you that anyone who is close to you can be a man or a woman can have that Delilah spirit. And that Delilah spirit is very simple. Look at how, uh, I mean, what Delilah did to Samson. It is always mixed with love. Okay, The person wants you to love him or her so much. Meanwhile, to, you know that the person is destroying it. That is Delilah spirit. You know it. That this person just wants to harm him. But then because of the love and the crying and the emotional you know, games that a person will play with you, then you just give in and, and we know something demise. That was what happened. And Delilah finished, you know, something. In fact, we never heard of Delilah. If you allow Delilah to harm you, you that Delilah will not even marry, will leave you when you become very poor. So you must overcome it and deliver Delilah. Always pray if you see some of these things. So, so keep that in mind. All the stories we have in the Bible, they are not just there. They are there to teach us lessons because life is the same. 
in every generation. Then we have those with Absalom's spirit. Absalom was the one who wanted to kill his father David and take over the kingdom. And those who really want to destroy the work of God, you know, the seed of the woman, uh, they are people most of the time that will carry Absalom's spirit. And you know how Absalom, what he did and how he ended his life. And we have those who have Jezebel's spirit as well. The Jezebel, the wife of Cain, Ahab. And the book of Revelation, Christ was rebuking a church for tolerating Jezebel. But that Jezebel was that it's a spirit and that will lead people to sexual immorality, will destroy people's family, will just, you know, uh, he or she will take over the church and Christ will not be the head of the church anymore. Don't forget, uh, uh, Jezebel took over right from Ahab and Israel. They all worship idols. So when a Jezebel spirit is tolerated in the church, all the people stop focusing on Christ Jesus and they're focusing on Jezebel, that man or that woman. And that person be the one to manipulate and to have their networks and to pull. And even after service, you see conversation going on and that man or that woman will be now taking the word of God away from the people and introducing the people to worldly life that they push people back into the world. So keep that in mind. And, and as you are growing as a Christian, these are the things you must battle and ask the Lord for spirit of discernment. That once you see, mm, is this person Jezebel? Uh, then you pray that the Lord will help that person to be delivered because most of them have no idea, right? Okay, so let's keep that. Then we have those who have the spirit of Haman. You know Haman from the book of Esther, how he wanted to destroy the Jews. So what Haman does is that that spirit, that spirit tries to get power, gets close to the pulpit. And then once it gets power and influence, then it begins to harm the church members. So Haman worked his way and became close to the king, uh, King Zezes, and then he used his position, and now he wanted everyone to bow down as he comes. If not, I will destroy you. And uh, uh, King, uh, not King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Mordecai understood, discerned, so he never bowed to Haman. And Haman wanted to destroy him and all Jews, and with prayers, God removed Haman from uh, the place. So the, 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 these places are all in the world, and the people will mingle with, they have them. And so, and you yourself, if you are not careful, they can come into your life and define who you are. We still have Judas around. People who always betray, betray. I told you when you come close to someone, don't betray. Then we have people like Mary Magdalene, who, who have good spirit, like Joseph, you know, very good spirit. We have people like David, and we have people like uh, St. Paul, you know. We have people like Peter, we have people like Rhoda, uh, we have people like Esther and Ruth. We have people like Hannah, you know. We have people like uh, James. And, you know, we, we have still those good spirit that God gives to all of us. So pray for the right spirit to come upon you. Okay, so we look at how the spirit leading or influencing you can affect your character, right? So you will be known by what you do. So we talk about Jezebel because of what she did. And so we've mentioned... Uh, Four, let's look at the fifth one. The fifth one is your willingness to add good virtues to your life. So another thing that can shape your character is that you decide to add good virtues to your life. What you don't have, you add. Let's go to 1 Peter 1, 5. Sorry, 2 Peter 1, 5. Add good virtues to what you don't have. 2 Peter 1, 5. Okay, so this is what he says. says. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. If you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their paths. And so here, the encouragement is to add good stuff, good virtues to your, to your life, and that will help shape, build your character. So knowledge, goodness, self-control, perseverance, godliness, 
uh, a, a, a love, mutual affection, add more. So if, if you are not, if you know you are not able to love, then you, you, you add love. And it's very simple. Always, you don't want you want the best for people, yourself, and God. If you if you don't have self discipline, then you discipline yourself. You don't give in to whatever your desire you desire. You discipline yourself, and it continues. So as we said, that no one you know, I was born as a, as a good person, but that good character is acquired over a process of time, and God expect us as part of all that we do in this world to also build our character. To conform to the image of Christ. Let me talk about this conformity. Conformity simply means that, let's say, if Christ uh, were to wear this dress, or maybe any gown, that I mean, that would be Christ's gown. So to conform means that Christ will take His garment and put it on you. Now you have to live and walk and do things in that garment like the way Christ. Did. That's conformity. So that when people see the garment, they will say, this is the garment of Christ. And when they look at the person in that garment, they will see you. But that whatever you do, resemble that of Christ. That's how we conform. And, and that is why, I mean, as this process, no one will be granted access to heaven's gate unless they wear, they wear someone's righteousness. Because our sins... And, and our righteous deeds, they are like filthy rags before God. So God will allow us. So then, then God will impute the righteousness of Christ on us. As if they were our own. So I'm not righteous and Christ puts his righteousness on me. The moment I gave my life to the Lord. And what happens is that from that day on, I must be conformed to Christ. And the same that I now wear the garment of Jesus. And I must behave and talk and do things like the way. Christ does. That is how conformity is. Now, if Christ put his garment on you and you don't conform, you will not fit. You, you yourself, you will not be comfortable. So you remove the garment and then you go back to your old lifestyle. And how many people have come to Christ and be baptized and have confessed Christ and yet because they did not take their time to build and be conformed to the image of Christ, they left the garment of righteousness and then they've gone back to the world. And I pray that that will never, never be your portion. That as Christ put his righteousness on you, his garment on you, you will grow to be conformed to that image. That when people see you, and as you speak, and as you carry yourself about, they'll say, this is Christ-like. We know the term Christians, the first uh, Christians, when they went to Antioch, the people saw them and said, these are Christians, Christ-like people. Why? Because they had conformed to the image of Christ, God's only Son, the one who was sent to die for our sins. The last one, the sixth one that can influence your life for good or bad is the quality of time you spend with God. The quality of time you spend with God. Human beings, we leaked, and so we need to be refreshed with godly virtues. We leaked, yeah, we leaked, we all we leaked. So, always spend quality time with God. A few days ago, we've discussed, brought Jesus, they brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He drove out many demons, but he will not let the demons be because they knew who he was. And there are many people having different spirits, impure spirits, demons in their life. Of course, uh, domestic abuse is on the right, right from both men and women, and rape. And I was sharing with my wife this afternoon an article I was reading. Uh, uh, where a man, you know, raped his his own three year old daughter, his own three year old daughter, and then when he was arrested and interviewed, he said a spirit came on him to do that foolish thing. You see, so evil spirit can also influence people to do things. And here, Christ drove all those evil spirits from people. And as you give your life to Christ, and as you come to church, the spirit of the Lord will drive the demons from you if you are willing to let go. That the way to receive that is that if you are willing to stop that bad thing that the demon is helping you to do, then the spirit will leave you. If you are, if you are very rude, for example, and you love being rude, don't, then know that, uh, uh, that there's an evil spirit influencing you to be rude. Maybe it can bring other spirits to also influence you negative. But the moment you tell yourself, I repent from being rude, a little prayer, a little laying of hands, the spirit will leave because you yourself... They don't want to live that lifestyle and how many people are destroying their beautiful lives because of the influence of bad spirit but, but our focus is on verse 35 
says that very early in the morning, morning while it was told that Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Why did Christ, why did Christ do that early in the morning? Just to be refreshed. Having ministered to many people, now he needed time with the Father so that the Father will put more virtues, more anointing, more goodness and love and mercy in him to go to the world to be a blessing to, to people. Verse 36 says, Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Jesus, everyone is looking for you. Okay, so Christ spent time with God. You know what, there were people waiting, you know, to receive his ministry. My brothers, my sisters, spend quality time with God to be refreshed. Okay, so that yeah, your character, the way you respond to things, your thinking and what will influence your life will be godly. And let me mention in conclusion that character, godly character is built over time and it continues until we breathe our last breath. It continues until you breathe your last breath and Christ will now give you, come and perfect you when he gives you the resurrected body. Uh, today we'll discuss, uh, if, I, if I can have the uh, phone and, and say hello to few people. Today we'll discuss uh, factors or things that shape your character to be good or bad to be good or bad and so uh, I, so uh, we've looked at quite a lot we said that your willingness your desires the people close to you that spirit living in you and also adding good virtue to your life and spending quality time with God God expect all of us to build our character as part of all that we do in this world and whoever neglect to do that sometimes you harm yourself because of your bad behavior you will suck from your work uh, you can never be promoted your wife may leave you your husband may leave you you may not even attract the good the right woman to marry because no one wants to take something rubbish home you may not attract the right man and you yourself you'll feel hopeless because you look at yourself and then, and then, then you don't have it. You don't find any anything good. But we've uh, we've also mentioned that. Uh, I mean, the unfortunate thing is that now we focus more on looks than on becoming good people. So people are concerned about how smooth their face will be, how well tuned their body will be, how nice they'll cut their hair, their whatever eye is it, whatever they call it, and you know. So uh, so the looks now is is rather. Uh, so, so, so somehow people are not true to themselves and I pray that this sermon will change and transform the way we live and the way we, we think and I will focus on becoming good people you know discussing some of the things we've mentioned here so may the Lord bless all of us let me say hello to few people and then we will uh, be uh, closing on Sunday it's likely we'll be looking at one of the principles of the character of, of the kingdom of God and that is that how God works or starts things in a small way with you and in, in any project and therefore your commitment to that small thing that insignificant thing is a telling to god that you are interested and god will grow here yeah? we look into that so there are a lot of people they don't like uh to start from small beginnings insignificant beginnings they don't see anything so they always reject things that are not of their standard when you do that you can't get anything good from god's kingdom the, the kingdom of god always starts as a master seed very small insignificant but then god will make it grow back your commitment to that seed watering it and and then and, and then you know uh, attending it tells god that now you are interested in that thing so so our building project okay our commitment and determination and zeal these are all telling god that we are interested and god is blessing it in in your marriage if you don't commit to it you are telling god that you are not interested okay in everything you do if you don't commit and you are not willing to pay a price. You are telling God that you are not interested in God. You can pray and pray and pray. God won't bless it. You must be committed to it. But we look at this. Uh, uh, God willing next Sunday. Then next Sunday we're looking at the fact that we need to go back to the 60s. And focus on building families. Right. And those who cannot build families now. Uh, that's fine. But you can encourage people to build families. That is one way. You know this uh, Black Lives Matter. That's one of the things that we've not focused on. But we must go back and build families. The black man, the black woman in those days, they were building families. Now from the 80s, they stopped. So now single motherhood uh, is now the norm and, and it's really destroying 
the black race and, and, and some Asian race and also some minorities. And so it is time we all go back and start building families. Uh, we, we may have to encourage you know, the coming generations to do that. But at least let's make sure that is also on our agenda. So Tuesday will be a very good sermon. Uh, make sure you tune in to listen. So let me say hello to a few people. Sharon Smith is watching with us. Adwa Sase is watching. Eddie is watching. And Sydney and Brother Jay, God bless you. Rocky Enim is watching. And Bez, uh, Kent, God bless you. And Steph, S Stephanie is watching. God bless you. And then Yasmin is watching. God bless you. Henry, God bless you. J. Bright, God bless you. Then Stacy watching. God bless you. Stacy and uh, uh, Stephanie Bess and Johnny is watching. Yes, Ray is watching. It's been a long time, Ray. God bless you. And Faith Passes. Yes, long time. God bless you. We can see Regina Kwako, Cecilia Fletcher. Watching Elom Esa Kolache, God bless you from Ghana. Francis Fletcher is watching. Yabuama is watching. God bless you. Stefano Blankson. Christabel, God bless you. Felicia, a word to be wise. God bless you. Jay. And yet, yeah, Sister Joanne, long time. God bless you. And uh, many others. So if you want to say hello to me, that would be nice. If not, uh, I leave you with God's blessings and God willing on Sunday we'll be looking at some of the principles of God's kingdom how we can live well victoriously from nothing to something awesome nothing in our hands yet with the help of the Lord the little we have will turn out to be awesome because God will bless it and so may the Lord continue to favor all of you and then may the blessings of the Lord be upon you may the Lord give you wisdom uh, to allow yourself to you know become good people and then may you be a blessing to your spouses and your family members and the church and your community at your workplace and in the world and more importantly uh, I, I just want to pray that all of us will make it to heaven uh, that, that one day we'll see Christ and we'll be in the presence of the Lord and with his angels worshiping the almighty God uh, forever and ever the essence of life is to live well and to make it to heaven and so that's why we pray so may the lord bless all of you tonight shalom god bless you amen